Back in the Far East, the disaster that was 1942 wore on. HMAS Yarra would be next to enter the cauldron, March 4 bearing witness to what many regard as the finest and bravest action in Australian naval history. Following hard service in the Mediterranean, the sloop had commenced escort and patrol duties off Java under a new captain, 34-year-old Lieutenant Commander Robert William Rankin of Sydney, New South Wales. On March 2nd, as part of the general evacuation of Batavia, Yarra, the depot ship Anking, the tanker Frankol, and the minesweeper MMS-51 set out for Fremantle, a perilous four-day journey through IJN-infested waters. The night of the third would pass without incident, crew morale high at the thought of returning to home waters. Then, at 6.30 a.m. the following morning, a sight to chill the hearts of all on board. The top masts of Imperial Japanese cruisers steaming in from the northeast. Three 10,000-ton giants, Otago, Takeo and Maya, and attendant destroyers. There could be no escape. Ordering his convoy to scatter, Rankin would immediately lay down a heavy smoke screen as his crew, fully aware of their fate, ran to their battle stations. Moments later, the sloop would turn directly into the face of the Japanese squadron, charge the line, and commence to engage with her three four-inch guns. Safely standing off, the cruisers would now unleash devastating, accurate salvos from their eight-inch batteries. Within minutes, the convoy was overwhelmed. Yet one hour into the action, Yara remained fighting, despite listing heavily to port and drifting helplessly, her engine room and steering gear destroyed, her decks ablaze. Shortly after 8 a.m., now encircled by enemy destroyers, Rankin would finally give the order to abandon ship. Moments later, he would be killed by gunfire. Though 34 ratings managed to scramble onto two rafts, Leading seaman Ron Taylor, ignoring his commander's last order, would remain at his station, firing defiantly to the last as his ship sank beneath him. Of the 34 survivors, 21 would perish over the coming days. Finally, on March 9, the remaining 13, wretched and close to death, would be rescued by the Dutch submarine K-11 and taken to Ceylon. During those five days, all except 13 of us either went mad, died of exhaustion, or sharks had a meal. Poor old Charlie just couldn't take it, and after three days went silly through drinking salt water and finally jumped over the side. Our rations in five days were one cup of water and two biscuits, so you can imagine how I looked when picked up. If there's any one man and any ship's company that epitomises the spirit of the Royal Australian Navy. It's Robert Rankin and those who served on board HMAS Yarra. On that day, in those waters, they showed us what courage and greatness are all about. Their deeds ought to be remembered. They ought to be commemorated by anyone and everyone who's ever been to sea with the Royal Australian Navy, because these men are the things of which legends are made.